I thought it'd be good to take a step back. You know, at the beginning of 2020, there was a lot of things that were enacted in different areas that impacted, you know, not just, let's say, traditional financial planning, but retirement planning, estate planning, and even tax planning. You know, there was this uh, bill that was passed called the SECURE Act, which I think a lot of people temporarily have forgotten about, not in, you know, in our professional uh, areas, but I think at the individual or business owner level. And that's because there's been so much going on. So I think maybe, you know, I know how it impacts other areas of, of retirement, perhaps maybe some of the estate areas, but maybe just for a few minutes, share what you're seeing from a tax planning perspective of what the SECURE Act has done or maybe has changed given it's in action this, you know, this, earlier this year. Sure. Um, thanks for that, Mark. So the SECURE Act, uh, which was passed at the end of 2019, um, was probably one of the largest changes to retirement programs and plans uh, uh, in a long time, quite frankly. Um, and to go through some of the uh, some of the changes um, that impact uh, most people, one is the um, uh, the required minimum distribution date um, for uh, required uh, distributions from an IRA were extended from age seventy and a half to age seventy two. And um, so that basically gives taxpayers, gives um, people another year and a half in order to keep their qualified money, their IRA money invested before they have to start withdrawing it. Um, that's a pretty big provision. Um, on the flip side, another big change is um, on inherited IRAs. Um, so under the old law, um, inherited IRAs, if one inherited an IRA from a deceased family member or somebody else, they had to take the IRA distributions either out according to the deceased's actuarial lifespan or the oldest beneficiary's actuarial lifespan. So the IRS basically required um, taxpayers to take distributions out over those two periods. The SECURE Act kind of closed that loop and said, um, we're only going to permit inherited IRAs to be distributed over 10 years and no further than that. So whenever the government passes um, some sort of a tax bill, um, there's always pros and cons. And there's what's called uh, tax savers and then revenue raisers. So that 10 year stretch is basically what's considered a revenue raiser. That's gonna raise revenue for the government, basically push more, um, uh, people are gonna to have to pay more tax as a result of inherited IRAs. Um, the SECURE Act also eliminated the rule that um, people could no longer contribute to an IRA after age 70 and a half. So people are now allowed to contribute to a IRA account um, after age 70 and a half. So that becomes a planning tool um, as well. Um, there are also some changes regarding, um, regarding 401k accounts. Um, there's a contribution credit for small employers that was instituted. Um, IRA contributions are allowed for graduate and postdoctoral students. Um, there's also no longer a 10% penalty on distributions uh, as a result of birth or adoption. Um, and that's up to $5,000. So if uh, a certain uh, couple has their first child and they need uh, some financial assistance, they can make a penalty-free withdrawal from their IRA up to $5,000. It's still taxable, but it avoids the 10% penalty that would normally apply at age 59 and a half. Those are some of the large um, changes that came about with, with the SECURE Act and really are gonna impact 
I think people over the next 10 years as they, um, at least people that are getting closer to that age 70, 72 um, time frame. Yeah, it's interesting. It sounds like from what you said or shared, there's been a lot of things that have happened at the individual level you know, for families and for growing families, especially, or, or even the retirees maybe who are getting ready to retire or just started. What about when it comes to business owners? I know you do a lot of work with business owners in a lot of specialty areas, but is there anything that business owners can be thinking about in re as a result of the SECURE Act that perhaps also has an impact on, on their you know, tax planning uh, strategies going forward or even right now? Sure, yeah. The, so the SECURE Act um, makes it a little bit easier for businesses to start and create retirement programs for employees, um, which includes the owners if, if they're employees as well, which is typical. Um, one of the changes allows uh, part-time employees to contribute to a 401k or retirement plan. And to step back, a 401k has two components. One, a employee deferral, where the employer employee is actually deferring a portion of their income into the plan. And then the second component is an employer match. And the employer match is uh, paid by the employer and deductible by the employer. So um, there's an allowance that, um, uh, that, that would, would sweep in um, part-time employees that meet certain requirements that, that allow them to do that. And with the tax credit available um, for starting a new plan, that also becomes a benefit for, um, uh, for businesses, existing businesses that maybe don't have a current retirement plan set up for employees, but have considered it over the years. Um, you know, the SECURE Act provides another avenue uh, of benefit with this tax credit to be able to look at. Okay, that's interesting. I, mean, I think that from business owners I've talked to, they're always looking for opportunities when it comes to tax planning and savings because there's so much going on. So there's been a lot of talk about how it affects individuals. So I think it's good to also highlight what you just said for those business owners who sometimes may not be aware of what's available to them. So that's great to hear.